So we have reached the last session of our uh, teaching on the blood covenant. Well, first of all, I hope that I will provoke you to read the Bible through these covenant lenses. There are many covenants in the Bible. I provoke you to discover them. I can just give you a few. There is the covenant with Noah. There is the covenant between Jacob and Laban. There is Isaac and Abimelech. But you find all the covenants over there and look at them with a different understanding right now and watch their promises and watch wherever there are blessings and curses and understand why in the Old Testament we see or in the Old Covenant part of the Bible we'll see all that commotion, all the, the wars and, uh, the, and, and the sicknesses and everything that happened as a consequence of them breaking the covenant. So in conclusion, we do have a new covenant in the blood of Jesus and in him we benefit, we, we, it's a privilege to benefit um, of everything that God has prepared to us for, and for us, every spiritual blessing. Um, the faith has to be rooted and grounded in the covenant promises. But how do you have access to this covenant? Maybe there are some of you who still um, question that. I, am I a part of that covenant? You know, am I covered? by the blood of Jesus, am I in him? Is he my representative? Is he the guarantor of my covenant with the Father? So for a covenant to be valid, first of all, you need to know it. So when Jesus walked on the earth, especially uh, through the, uh, the Sermon on the Mountain and all his teachings, he actually shared the terms of the new covenant. So you have to become familiar with Jesus' teachings. So you have to know it, you have to understand. And then you have to find the context, the promises. You have to find those elements. But once you have discovered those in the Bible, you have to claim it in front of the enemy. You have to bring those promises and stand of them. They are your covenant promises. And the enemy is going to, is going to try to steal them from you. How? By shifting your faith. Because wherever there is doubt, things don't manifest. So those are the steps. How do I, once I read the terms of the covenant, everything that Jesus has presented, and I believe in that, and I want him to be my representative, and I want to be part of that family, then what do I do? Well, I have to confess it. it the Bible says that through confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, you are saved. You are becoming part, a part of, uh, of God's new family. So you have to confess it. You have to be baptized, and that's... Uh, that's the beginning of your covenant relationship with God. When you leave everything that you have behind, when everything gets buried, you get into the baptismal water and you come up a new person. And then there is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is the promise of God. That, that's the uh, fantastic promise of the blood covenant. The Holy Spirit walking with us, being in us, empowering us, but also baptizing us, which give us the supernatural power to to do the even greater things that Jesus has done. So I encourage you to connect with leaders in your area or with Adalbert from uh, Calgary Bible Training Center and follow those steps and be assured and be confirmed into this new blood covenant with, uh, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I bless you all to be a part of that. I bless you all to walk in submission, to walk in dependence, and I bless you all to, to do great exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. And I, just to share my personal journey, um, after we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, we were truly empowered to go and, and share the gospel. Before, uh, we were good in Bible studies. We've studied a lot. We prayed. We, we had home groups. We participated in events. But it was after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that promise of God, that empowered us to go and share the gospel. So God called us back on the mission field where in Romania, a country that we, we left 23 years ago, was still struggling with the aftermath of communism, so we had no desire to go back. We enjoyed our life in Canada. We are both professionals. We had good careers. We spent 14 years in Toronto. We spent, uh, spent another uh, uh, almost 10 years in Calgary. We have good friends here, a good church. We really like what we are doing. But, but that calling was answered 
because God has, in, has empowered us. He has given us the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I strongly encourage you to seek that and then to be open to whatever He has for you. It might be completely different than what you have in mind right, right now. That's why you have to surrender it all and to let Him lead you. So I bless you with that in the name of Jesus.